Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Thank you, as always, for stopping by. I'm always grateful. Political Reflections. Marwan Bashara in, the, in Al Jazeera has written an article about the U.S.-Iranian situation, arrogance, fanaticism, and the prospect of a U.S.-Iranian war. Tensions between the United States and Iran have flared up since the Trump administration withdrew from the nuclear deal with Iran last year and began ratcheting up sanctions on the Islamic Republic. Earlier this month, tensions turned into threats as Washington refused to extend sanctions waivers for buyers of Iranian oil, designated Iran's elite revolutionary guards a terrorist organization and began military preparations to deter Iran. These measures are pushing the Iranian economy to the brink. Oil exports, which have already dwindled from 2.5 million to less than 1.3 million barrels a day since last year, could drop even further, crippling the state budget. Ordinary Iranians are already suffering from the raging inflation currently at 40% and skyrocketing prices of goods will likely bear the brunt of Washington's push to bring Iranian oil exports to zero. And this is only the beginning. If the past three Gulf Wars of the 1980s, Iraq-Iran, 1991, US-UN-Iraq, and 2003, US-UK-Iraq, are anything to go by, a confrontation between the US and Iran would prove far more devastating. And then talking about Trump calling the JCPOA the worst deal ever, the US wants Iran to end all its nuclear and missile programs, withdraw its forces from Syria, stop the destabilizing policies in Iraq, Afghanistan and the Gulf, and cease its support for armed groups like Hezbollah, Hamas and the Houthis in exchange for negotiating a new nuclear deal. No one would have been more surprised than the U.S. itself if Iran had said yes to any of it. These demands basically constitute total Iranian surrender, not only to the U.S., but also to Israel and Saudi Arabia. And then, uh, basically, I can't agree with them more. Things have changed. On the 28th of October 2013, I wrote a book, uh, an article, Barack Obama and Hassan Rouhani, the two Husseins, and I was talking about the rapprochement that we were seeing at that time. Now let's go to this trade war, and by all accounts, uh, Wall Street Journal says that China decided to play hardball in trade talks. Trump's rants at the Fed's Powell helped convince China that Trump thought the US economy was weak and he would settle for a weak deal. China's response from the Global Times, China won't flinch in the face of tough-talking U.S. trade war. Reuters, China backtracked on nearly all aspects of the U.S. trade deal. The document was riddled with reversals by China that undermined core U.S. demands, the sources told Reuters. In each of the seven chapters of the draft deal, China had deleted its commitments to change laws to resolve core complaints. Trump responded in a tweet on Sunday vowing to raise tariffs on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods from 10 to 25 percent on Friday. Now looks irreversible. Washington, this undermines the core architecture of the deal. One private sector source, China got greedy, China reneged on a dozen things if not more. The talks were so bad that the real surprise is that it took Trump until Sunday to blow up. The administration and the latest tariff escalation would take effect at 12.01 a.m. Friday, hiking levies on Chinese products such as internet modems, routers, printed circuit boards, vacuum cleaners, and furniture. Mnuchin, who is the dove of doves, who had been more open to a deal with improved market access and at times clashed with Lighthizer, appeared in sync with Lighthizer in describing the changes to reporters on Monday while still leaving open the possibility that new tariffs could be averted with a deal. So Z essentially is playing hardball. The Chinese delegation, however, was at the airport as of this morning and was being uh, said that it, they were going to take off soon. Trump said that China broke the deal I take you back to a chicky run story, the James Dean rebel without a cause, and that's what they're both doing. 
Who blinks first? We're going to find out, aren't we? And as I said previously, the Chinese government is quite surgical and is hitting the farm economy in particular. 15th of October, I wrote about this and I said the incident with the USS Decatur, where a Chinese warship came within 45 yards of the USS Decatur in the South China Sea, is surely a precursor, I said. This geopolitical contest will escalate dangerously. Powerful forces on both sides are driving the world's two strongest countries towards fully-fledged confrontation. In that same article on 15th of October, I was speaking about how the real surgeons on Trump's side were Dr. Peter Navarro and Robert Lighthizer. The stock market remains Trump's Achilles heel a second sortie of B-52s is heading to, the, heading to the Middle East as Strat Sentinel. Watch this video footage from CGTN, rehearsal ahead of Russia Victory Day Parade held in Moscow. And this video that Mohamed Wellier tweeted, Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn sparring over Liverpool, really very good.